Good morning. I know it's a little bit earlier than I normally stream, but uh, let's see how this is. Also, a quick voice check. Can't tell if that's too early or not. Or oh, too early, too um, too quiet or not. So I'm gonna gonna increase the gain and increase you just a little bit. All right, I think that will be a little bit better. As long as I don't lean into the microphone and uh, and speak, then uh, then we'll be fine. Because I'm usually um, I'm getting to a lot more yellow than before, so maybe a little tiny bit down. Let's uh let's actually see how this is. Hello, than before, so maybe a little tiny bit down. Let's uh I don't know. That sounds that sounds pretty good. I just don't want it to peak. All right, I'll try that. Good morning, Miguel. You found me in the early the early stream. Although I've been doing a lot of those recently. So I guess that's not really anything new. Uh, good morning, Chow Dog. What are we going to work on today? So today uh, I'm going to be planning out the uh, the game that I've sort of been working on for the last uh, the last week or so. Um, basically, what I did was a, a bunch of uh, spikes to sort of find out what what I could do and some technologies that I needed to figure out uh, in order to sort of get an idea about how I would implement something like this. And I think I have a good idea now of how to do that. There, there might be some discovery that still needs to happen in the future, but what project doesn't have that? And uh, I went online last night and actually found uh, drawing application uh, so that we could use it and uh, I don't have I, I lost my USB-C to USB uh, what is it a um, converter so I can't plug my Wacom tablet in unfortunately so I'm just gonna have to use the uh, the good old touch screen that I've got but uh, this is a much better option for drawing than what we had before which was an app that crashed the computer so um, that's uh, that's a, that's always a good thing. All right, so the idea. So here's here's the general pitch for the game, and I don't think I really have uh, stated the entire idea all at once uh, before. Just little snippets here and there. So the idea is that I'm going to have a battle royale game that's in a. A large arena now that's nothing new there's like a dime a dozen uh, battle royals out there right now um, first of all this is gonna be my first game that I want other people to play seriously uh, and by seriously I mean like actually um, try and and play not just a hackathon game which is all the games that I pre created before so I don't actually I don't have any um, delusions of grandeur that this will be like a hit or a lot of people will try to play this. For me, the idea of a first game is to uh, break in, make sure that I can complete it, and or at least come as close to completion as possible. And also, um, I want to, to see whether or not, uh, well, just to get experience making game type stuff so that the next game can be better and I can improve and move on and up. Uh, onwards and upwards all, all that good stuff so um my sort of spin on this entire uh take uh that's also why like i don't really care about uh doing this completely including the plan on the stream is because it uh, it's it's not about like selling the game it's about making the game i think that's going to be the fun part and that's where all the learning is going to happen uh, so what I want is bots, essentially. It's a very weird pen marks that are happening here. I think it's because I have a calligraphy pen. Um, also, a tassel feather that appears in some of these. So we'll have we'll have we'll drop a bunch of bots in here, and eventually I would like the code to be provided by the players. So a player would write some code, and uh, it would tell the bot what to do. So 
um, this bot, for example, would be uh, maybe a, a random walking bot. Uh, its instructions are super simple. It just chooses a location, it moves towards it. When it gets there, it chooses another location, moves, you know, moves towards that. And also, as soon as it can, it just fires as rapidly as it can in, a, in random directions. And it just hopes that maybe it'll win because nobody can predict exactly where it's going to go. Whereas maybe a bot like this will, will be one that says, I am going to go into the corner and I'm just going to go around the outside of the arena and I'm going to shoot at the closest, uh, the closest enemy that I could find. So there could be a lot of strategies that are created here. Uh, good morning, Iwombo. Um, but the technical aspects of how to set that up are going to be the tough parts for this. Um, so we're going to have that. Eventually, I would also like to have little drops. So I should, can I create, can I choose color? Sort of. I could go like, that's really Weird color choice chooser. Okay, this is better. If let's choose like orange. So if I choose little things like this, these could be drops, let's say. And the drops, I don't know if I would have them appear randomly. We'd have to, I'd have to play with this a little bit to see, you know, what, what feels right. But it might be something like rapid fire or adding bullets to um, adding bullets so you could fire twice or, or something else. Um, the idea is that something that can give you the an edge, but is also dangerous because if everybody else goes for it, you're all clumped together. And that, of course, makes it easier to be uh, to be, you know, taken out. Um, and at the end of the game, you'll tally up by how long, like, uh, how many others you were able to survive and, uh, and where, where you ended up. Uh, points will be awarded and we could have some kind of uh, uh, screen and then we'll, we'll start the next match. So that brings us to the fun sort of how we're going to do this technical problems. So we've already gone through GGEZ and sort of taken a look at how we can use the game loops and actually um, have a random walker moving around the screen and shooting randomly. And so we've got all of that. And what I believe um, would be necessary if I want a whole bunch of uh, random users and um, random, random players that are actually sending in external code, that's going to be a little bit interesting because if we have, let's say, our game engine over here. So this is the game. Wow, that's a bad G. Uh, engine. So this is our core. Then I'm going to need some kind of, um, like, maybe a, a containerization system. I'm thinking Docker right now. So if I have something like Docker, then what I can do is uh, have maybe bot A and bot B and so on. And that corresponds to, uh, to these guys down here. So this might be A, B, and C. That was not a C. Let's try that again. C. The game... Um, the game engine, when you register register a uh, a bot, it would have to come in, hit a route, and this is where I'm actually not sure that I want to put that part inside of the game engine core, or if I want to put that over here. This might actually have to be another spike that we do beforehand, but uh, so it's it's one of two ways. Either we hit the game engine and it sort of registers the bot and adds the code in or we're probably gonna have to have some kind of web server that was a lovely server um, and this is going to be showing the high scores it's going to allow uh, someone to register a new bot 
Um, and by that, it means like pointed at a GitHub, a repository, and that will then interface with uh, like the Docker system and register a new container by uh, uh, spinning up, well, downloading the code or downloading, get it, just getting the, uh, the Git URL, spinning up the container, um, doing a Git clone inside of there, uh, running like RLS or Rust-C on it, um, probably making sure there's no unsafe like runs in there. Uh, that's that's another question I have is like how can I reduce the number of unsafe codes that we want? Um, mainly because uh, the concern would be breaking out of the Docker uh, the Docker sort of entire ecosystem, which is possible. It's it's not easy, but it is possible if I have some kind of um, vulnerability that's running there, which, I mean, operating systems these days have tons of vulnerabilities. Uh, heck, the, our CPUs have tons of vulnerabilities that, uh, that we can access through memory or some other problems. And since Docker uses shared memory, shared CPU, shared resources, that's going to be a problem. But um, it might be the best that I have right now with the money that I have because, I mean, what are my other choices? I don't have enough. We, you could only run around seven um, actual VP, VPCs um, at a time uh, on like hardware that I would have access to. And I don't want to pay for like one full cloud server per per system. I guess we could do like a Lambda, a Lambda function, but again, those will get really expensive. I want to be able to build and play and play this on stuff that I have here. Um, and then not have this be like an expensive deploy, because if it ends up being too expensive to like sort of have this out there, um, then I'm going, then uh, it obviously won't be a releasable game. I won't be able to afford to release it. Um, but, and also I want to be able to have tons and tons of these. If I could get up to the full 100, um, that would be pretty, pretty awesome. All right. So we have, we have Docker, we have our game engine, we have a web server. I believe the web server will then register and set up the Docker, um, set up the Docker sort of containers and what we have. Then in order for the game engine to know what what Docker containers are there, I am probably going to need to have uh, some kind of um, some kind of uh, database. So throwing throwing all this stuff into Docker is probably a good idea. Um, in fact, now that I think about it, I should probably just extend this out here like this, and everything goes into the pool together. So the game engine would be a Docker, the web server and Docker. So that way they can sort of net, use the Docker network together and, uh, and all just communicate with each other. Also, if I do that, I could script this with Docker Compose or Kubernetes or any other system so it can, um, it can sort of like spin that up really easily. Uh, also, that would mean that web server would easily be able to... Um, well, do I want the web server to spin up Docker? Because Docker within Docker is a little bit interesting. I may want to, and is there is there a an eraser? There is an eraser. I may want to do, oh, that erases even the background that I started with. That's interesting. Let's do, how about pen? If I do something like this, then our web server will sit outside of, of the entire uh, game ecosystem. It can register new Docker containers, and uh, when it's ready, the web server can also launch, that's an interesting arrow, can launch the game and, and tell it to go. Um, 
we're going to need a database most likely. So, uh, can I, why is the size like that? That's too big now. All right, database. So if I have a database layer like this, uh, the web server can write to this and the game engine can read from it. That's a bad pattern. Um, I would actually want to have the actual database. So a database API. I don't think I, a, okay, let me just erase this and start over again. So we'll have a database API with a database below it. This will connect in like that, and all of these can connect in. So I can tell the database API to write in that, hey, we've added Docker container A. And it will uh, it'll store like the location of Docker container A. It'll store all of that, that kind of stuff. Also, the game engine will read it and write to it. So uh, then when it's ready, the web server can kick off the game engine and it will start reading, um, reading and writing to the database. Um, okay, so we'll have certain number of bots. We could even repeat certain bots and put them multiple times in there um, under different names, especially if I create a bunch and they can be like the computer controlled ones. Computer controlled versus not computer controlled. They're all computer controlled. All right, let's see what else we need to work on for this. Okay, so we have, um, we have the API of the database that stores all of the, the Docker containers that are the bots. Then what else would I need? Probably inside of, um, inside of the game engine, we need a way to store the state of each game as it plays. So my entire idea would be it would loop through and ask um, essentially every frame or every every turn. So it would be a turn-based game. Every turn, it would send an object, uh, send an object to each of the bots and say, here is the arena. So here is um, here is the coordinates of where you are. Here are the court. Here's the full width of the arena, starting at x and y. So we need, so when we send to each one, I think we could do text here. Can I do that? That's really big. Can I change that to line height one? Chewy. I want, fine, open sands. They're still really big. All right, I'll, I'll just try that. Um, all right, so what, what we would need to send to it, we would need to send the, um, the location. Press and return. Oh, okay, that helps. So uh, we'll send the location. We'll send the, the sort of the game width, the game height. We'll have to make um we'll have to, to show like where drops are. So drop locations. Um, my my initial thought is that version 1.0 of this game, everybody can be um, aware of everyone else in the arena at all times. Uh, so it can be the other bot locations. And then since, do we want bullets? So I've been, I've been playing around with bullets just flying slowly through the arena. Uh, we could have it where bots fire instantaneously. And so it's sort of like, a, what, hit scanning 
in in games where they aim at some place and they just they just fire it um and maybe that could be like two different types of bullets one is sort of a lighter one that doesn't kill you right away maybe it takes like three shots of that uh to really kill you but you have to guess where that next bot is going to be so if you do that then um then it's going to like obviously well fire out and we'll we'll see we'll see what happens and then the other one might be a more traditional sort of bullet that flies slower uh, but if it hits it can um it can do massive damage but if we do that we need to track it and we need to tell other bots so they could potentially dodge uh, dodge these so uh, maybe bullet location once the bullets fired I'm not sure if it's um, I'm not sure if the we need to worry about like who the bullet came from so if I have a bullet location so a is sitting right here C fires a bullet at a let's say C fires directly at A, in case A decides to stand still for a little bit to try to throw off aim. It comes like this, and maybe it, maybe we figure out something like it takes, um, it takes five turns to go across the entire map for the bullet. So if that's the case, then it hits like, you know, it's here first, and then we'll reach them this thing with the second turn. Uh, Katali, good morning. Um, love the octopus. <laughs> then, um, so that would say like, okay, you now know that there's a bullet here. Like it suddenly appeared, it's right here. And uh, there's there's a lot of times like, we're not gonna be able to plan everything out because we're, we're not gonna know everything in the future about what's fun to play with this game until actually we have it and start playing. Uh, in that case, we're going to go with a more agile approach and just sort of say, yeah, well, this is a general idea, but plans don't really survive reality very well. So this is more of like figuring out what our initial user stories are going to be, or player stories, as it were. All right, so we would have one at bullet location. Um, the bullet speed is going to be sort of set up. You probably go with slow bullets since everything is known to everyone. It'll just be a shootout during three text actions. I don't know if there's a strategy to that. Yeah, that's that's a little bit. Um, that's I think there's so much new stuff to me technology wise. I'm thinking that a shootout is probably what it's going to end up being. And then in the future, like a future edition that I'm not really going to plan for, we could put barricades up. Or barricades or like have, have areas of the map where you're not able to see everything, like you have a distance that you could see. Uh, I think that would be something really nice to add in. So I think, I think you're right. Slow bullets that move like X, X terms per second and that will be something that just passes in. So bullet location, maybe a bullet speed would be good to have in here. So if C fires in and there's a bullet right here, it's possible that if it, if it appears here to begin with, A doesn't know that it's heading towards uh, them. They're gonna have to wait for one or two ticks to see, okay, it's moving this way, I need to get out of the way. And that would be interesting to see if if somebody writes in code to uh, to actually fully dodge dodge bullets like that, which I think would be would be fun to sort of write that code in. Okay, so we have speed, we have bolt location. I think I'll do a a grid based system, which in the future will make it will make it visible. So. 
iteration one will just be everybody is known to everybody. Iteration two, well, this is like if I if I continue developing after 1.0, I would want to maybe section off and have um, a vision amount. So, whoa, that's not what I wanted. Uh, let's say I wanted, I can crop. If I did something like this, maybe this is all B can see. Um, and so C doesn't isn't aware, B isn't aware of C or any of these other bots around here because this is all the vision that B has. And then if I have barriers, that uh, that would also like in, impede uh, vision around saying like, hey, you can't see them because there's a barrier between you. Um, that is, so that's technology that I don't know how to build yet. So I'm not gonna worry about that right now. But that this would make it so it'd be a lot less of a, um, just a shootout and more of a sort of creep around, try to find people, hide behind things, and uh, and then and then kill things. And then of course there is the uh, there is the entire idea of the the zone. So this is going to depend upon how large we end up making the arena. If we make it too large, then we're going to want to sort of have that. I don't know the barrier, um, sort of like the ed where they take the playable zone and you shrink it down. Uh, that would be interesting too to sort of add in. I don't know if I want to add that in in the first iteration. I think I want to see whether or not it's even uh, it's necessary and how big it to be. But with that, we'd basically change the game location. Um, let's see, so is there anything else with bullet speed? Um, probably number of players left. Oh, I'm still on that, I wanna go back into text. Can I update you still? Nope, I can't. Uh, okay, so players left. Probably oh, number of players left. Um, let's see what else. I don't know if we want to do health or if it's going to be a one-shot kill thing. Uh, I think also so we have drop locations. Then to do what else? Um, ooh, inventory. So inventory, like what? What capabilities have you picked up from a drop so that you can you can use that? And then what uh, what else what else can we do here? I'm thinking that might kind of be it for for like what we hand to the player, we we might come back and, and think of more stuff. That's become really small. I have no idea if you can even read that anymore. That's super, super tiny. Can I make this bigger? Oh yeah. Um, all right, so then of course, we're gonna have the actual play. So. I've been thinking that every tick I was about to ask if you could increase that. All right, great minds think alike. alike. So I'm thinking a grid-based system to make it as easy as possible to make it so it's not like just moving pixels at a time. Um, I'm thinking a full grid like this. So just, just squares probably would be easiest. This would also make it easy to like sort of drop down and make sure that you're in the middle and not have to worry about like individual pixels if, if you've reached there. And so these could be coordinates. So this would be obviously uh, zero, zero. I don't think I can draw this really easily. Zero, zero. 
that's horrible. Um, <laughs> this would be zero, zero. This would be zero. No, this would be one, zero, and, and so on. And so if there was a drop in there, then you just move to the square that has the drop and you pick it up. Uh, this also means that we could have barricades or other things that would be maybe a stretch goal. Um, when you move, you just move to another square, left, up, or down. So it becomes more of like a board game version of a battle royale. And you can say, I want to move, and then you can only move in directions. And I have no idea if this is going to make it harder or easier for, um, for bots. Like, would I want to say, okay, bot, I want you to move um, forward, like in the way that you're, you're facing, or north, that UML. What I find crazy about this system is that it's not updating quite, and I'll put this right in here. It's not updating quite as, uh, as smoothly as I would like it to. So when I try to like type something in here, it's almost good. So if I do like one, zero. Oh, it's better when I do, when I do that. Draw.io, so I tried draw.io um, last night. I didn't really spend much time. I, didn't, I wanted to actually draw something like this and it didn't sound like it was gonna have that feature set. You gone, you gone, and now I move you over here. Um, but maybe I'll have to take a look at it again to see if it's if it does. I thought it only did. Um, yeah, drawing is not for like. I want an MS Paint style drawing, which is what I'm getting here. Uh, <laughs> Because all planning should be done in MS Paint. That's 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 what I've learned. Okay, so when we create a game and we throw a bunch of bots into it, I don't know if we're gonna have like you choose the location that you're going to, uh, or if um, if it's random. That's that's like these are these are questions that would have to be sort of answered by uh, by play testing and and uh, having fun with that. But the general idea is every bot will be assigned or get into a a square, and then the game will start, and order of play because that can be an important thing, right? Because if somebody if somebody gets to go first then they they could potentially fire like they could fire their bullet and somebody else will see that right away and they'll their turn will be to react and they're they're earlier on i'm thinking probably like a randomized system where everybody gets a random like that they get a random turn um when they initialize into the game and we'll just like sorry uh if you're if you're last or first, I don't know which one will be a, um, a benefit at this time. We'll find out later. Or if you're right in the middle. Uh, also, so the game engine will ask each bot, go through and say like, hey, here's the state of the game. What do you want to do? You're allowed two actions, I'm thinking. Uh, first, your, so actions. I might as well put this in text also actions uh, so I'm thinking um, one will be a move action uh, and two will be a, a fire action so that's my my thought on what what the bots can do each turn um, there might we might be able to do something else like a drop or trade or some other type of stuff if we have teams but I'm thinking nothing like that right now so that gives us uh, what what the bots can do. Each um, I think also we wanted to put in here a random random turn order. Can I easily make you smaller? 
Yeah. That's too small. So just say random turn order. Um, I somehow lost the R on the order. Yeah, I'm using touchscreen. I um, I do have a Wacom tablet that I have used in the past on the stream, but uh, I'm using all of my USB ports right now except for my USB-C, and I recently lost my USB-C to a uh, converter, so I, I can't actually plug it in without losing like a mouse or a keyboard. And I don't want to do that right now. Um, okay, so if we have that, we have a random we have random turn order. Uh, each turn, we loop through all of the bots in in the turn order, and we ask them what actions do you want to take. Uh, we hand them we hand them the data. We ask them what actions they want to take. They then uh, they then say, I want to move like one to the left, one to the right, one up, and one down. Um, and also we will um, we'll set the like where, where they if they want to fire their if they can so okay we need to add in and do they have this okay so I want to add in for them the um, their speed so their speed I want to add in um, can they fire So I think having them know what like your speed is and if you can fire the bullet will help you choose your actions. Uh, they have the location of all the other players. They have the location of the bullets. They can choose where to go from there. The game will store all that into internal structures uh, and probably some kind of, uh, of vector so that we can just loop through it. And we can store down the results of each game because like the game engine uh, we're gonna do one game at a time so I'm, I'm not gonna really run like multiple games and have like many many people playing this is very much going to be an asynchronous and asynchronous thing where the game engine will load up all the bots and you'll you'll play the game and then I'm thinking in the in the database um, it'll store the results of the game which can really just sort of be a, uh, the instructions, the move fire instructions of each bot. So starting with their locations, it moves over here, so it's new location, then it moves over here, and that can just be an array for each bot. Then we're gonna want the web server at the end of the game to sort of take those instructions at the end, and then render it into CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. So that way people can watch in sort of graphical ways uh, how the game went. How did their bot do? So that would be, that would basically show these circles as they move around, uh, which can be animated then, and, uh, and, and sort of see, see what happened. So that would be at the end so let's do text again that's just nicer at um game turns so if possible i would like to store the entire game state into the game engine as it's playing and then when it's finished then send that all to the database all at once hopefully uh, we don't end up crashing the game engine because we have too, like, too much memory uh, in the process. So this is something we're going to have to walk, you know, take a look at and make sure that we're not uh, <laughs> storing too much data in there. But that's sort of my idea of like not having the bots be part of the game engine and we're only storing um, like move, fire, move, fire, and, uh, and references to where the bots are. It's going to be hopefully pretty small. Just some text. Um, but there's going to be a lot of strings. A lot of strings, a lot of vectors, a lot of other things. But uh, we sh hopefully we should be fine. 
So we're, we're going to want to restore uh, the game turns, which can I, oh I can do tab, which means um, the moves, so the locations um, each turn. I guess that's not really a tab. It kind of did. So the location needs turn, and we're also going to want the, um, I don't know why I'm using that keyboard. I have this keyboard down here. It's much nicer. Uh, so we have the locations each turn, uh, the fire, um, firing, like sort of firing direction, firing and direction, and uh, bullets. Uh, bullet locations and probably health so health of each bot I think that would be everything we need from there I want you back to this There, so each turn. This is what's gonna get stored into the database. So I can, that'll get stored into the database at the end of the game. The web server will then sort of render and make it look pretty. Um, I guess look pretty is the wrong word. Make it, make it graphical so that way you could visualize what the bots did and how the game ended up playing out. And uh, since they're just instructions, those can be re-rendered on the client side. So we can do that on uh, individual clients' computers as opposed to uh, like pre-rendering an entire uh, system on the um, uh, well on my server and take up uh, take up processing power. And then what we can do is. Um, as soon as we finish one one game, we'll just have the game engine. As long as it's running, it'll just start another game up, and uh, that way you can get lots of feedback uh, from our bots um, as as they're playing. So questions that we have that would need to be answered. Well, like unknowns that like we may want to like design for is. Um, do we want some kind of, uh, like energy system? The reason for an energy system for bots would mainly be, uh, if one bot is, if we have too many bots trying to play all at once, do we want them to not play? Um, every once in a while and say like, okay, you can only play once every two hours. Uh, we don't actually know how long. How long it would be so do you want energy system for blot bots um vision blockers vision and bullet blockers also um health bullets kill with one or more uh let's see do we want, um, I keep on like the, the shield, the, do we want the arena, arena to shrink? And do, I think, I think this will be it for the, the server side. And there'll be a completely another application to make the, um, to make the front end for this. So with with this being with this all being you know said, what uh, what do you all think about this? Do you think that this would be something that might be fun, or not <laughs> not fun? It's kind of hard to tell uh, from. Well, it's hard to tell because I'm not I'm not like super familiar with making games. And so I don't know if this would be fun to play. I think it would be fun to try out at least a little bit. 
I want it to exist. Um, if nothing for me to, to write some bots into it. And I think I would learn a ton about using Rust and some interactive stuff with that. Yeah, excited to see. All right. So this is this is the plan. It's gonna be this is gonna be a long one too. Um, this is gonna be probably the most involved personal project I've ever done because there's just so much to uh, so much to like fill out for it. So I the other thing is I don't know if I want to promise that I'm gonna do every bit of this on stream or if I'm also gonna work on it outside. Uh, I do have a day job. I am like I have no delusions of grandeur with uh, with game making. Uh, I'm actually thinking that I'm probably going to be just sort of working on this on the side while streaming. Uh, but every once in a while, maybe not. And I may want to add one more time. Maybe in the end we can touch upon reinforcement learning. Let's get some AI ish in it. Yeah. Um, have you seen the guy coding? something similar to this project on Twitch as well. Working for a long time in this project already. Take your time. Um, maybe, so I know there's, I can't remember his name. Um, he, has, he has some lights behind him that he can change colors with. And he's making sort of like a bot, a bot game that that's fights against each other. Uh, I haven't played the game, so I don't actually know exactly how it works. Um, I'm not like, is that also a, a programming game where like you program the actions or you just sort of choose a bot that already has actions pre-programmed in it? Um, I'd, be, I'd be curious about that because if it's a programming game then I'm gonna wanna go play that. Um, definitely because I, I just, I'm loving those type of games right now. And so this'll, this'll be something that I, that I would get into as well. You know, something about this OS that I don't like is uh, you can program bots with different weapons, etc. You program the bots with drag and drop logic blocks. Rotate projects so don't burn out, try a different thing, time to time. Absolutely, yes, that's a great idea, Juan. Um, I I will definitely be doing that. I do have I do have like other little things that I'm doing just for myself. Um, so I I'm not planning, I, I don't know if I'm ever actually going to truly finish this project. Um, it it may just take forever, it may not. Um, I may like have to hand it off to somebody else if I get burned out on it, or just sort of temporarily stop it. But I'm a big believer in if, especially like this is a, a learning uh, project, uh, having a goal to reach for, like to move towards, even if the end result of the goal isn't the entire sort of like idea, it's more of uh, just the journey towards it is really going to be important. So that's that's sort of what I'm what I'm going to be going for here. And uh, and I've had enough, I've had enough students or anything else with uh, with games to have. I've learned. Um, oh, I don't want to move that. Uh, from here. There's a lot of uh, really interesting tech questions. How do I move left now? I like, I can't scroll to the left anymore. This is like sad. Okay, I need to scroll a little bit, then I can grab it with my mouse. No? Okay, no, I can't scroll to the left anymore. Okay, I use the middle, the middle mouse wheel button and press left on it because I can't use Oh, that's that's clunky. For some reason, I can't go left and right on my um, my trackpad on my mouse. I have to use my mouse middle wheel, and luckily, it has a left and right function too. That's kind of weird. Um, yeah, so I think the biggest thing is uh, this is a learning project. Um, it will last as long as uh, it will last as long as we all want to do it together. Um, but I'm also gonna make it open source so that way even if for some reason 
uh, it doesn't get completed. If one of you want to continue it on, then that will that will always it'll always live in some in some way. So since we have uh, eight minutes left before my hour is up this morning, let's. Um, I want to start sort of thinking about what things that I know how to do right now and what things we're gonna to have to learn. Uh, so this is gonna be there's gonna be some uh, definitely some learning going on here. So the game engine, we know how to do that. We've already built this part ourselves. The web server, we've done that as well. So we've created an Actix, uh, Actix web server. I don't know if we're going to use that for this one, but we know how to build one in Rust. Also, um, I, I'm really loving Rust right now, so as much backend stuff in Rust as possible is going to be the name. Here's a short video about his project. Awesome. I'm going to... That well. Open that up. Botland, right. Yes, I remember. I saw I saw him streaming. Um he streams a lot. Like he has long streams during the middle of the day. Uh I'm guessing that he's doing this for his day job. Um I'll have to, I'll have to actually check it out and try to play. Uh if it's open beta. Uh I what I want to do is so I don't want to interfere with that. So I, I don't want to like compete with any other games if possible. So my my game logic is going to be, I should write this down. Um, any any code. So certain, I guess any code. Maybe we're like, um, let's support. Let's begin by supporting um, node.js and maybe rest. Ah, that's not what I want. Node.js because that's really simple. And maybe I even want to just start with, uh, start with node.js. And so the idea is that you write first one in, I don't know. Got to get the popular one first. Oh, no, uh, Python. Okay, Python's a good one. We'll do Python. So Node.js and Python. That will be, this will make the putting them into Docker containers really easy because you could just say, hey, what language are you? That'll spin up the appropriate Docker container that has the, the language for it. And also, Danny Fritz, good morning. Awesome to have you on. We haven't seen you here in a while. I hate the fact that I can't grab this with my mouse. Uh, okay, so other unknowns here. Uh, I have done a bunch of stuff with Docker in the past. So just the general Docker commands to like create something is uh, is not going to be too terribly different, uh, difficult. Um, but having having it set up automatically through scripts. So I have no idea how many little mini programs we're gonna have to make sort of manage the Docker. We're probably gonna have to have at least one sort of script that reaches out to the other Docker containers, activates it temporarily, and says, okay, now, now ready to go. So I'm gonna name this Spikes. So these are gonna be little things that we're gonna play around with in the uh, the coming days before we actually create the game proper. So one spike will be um, uh, managing, so managing Docker containers for the game. Uh, databases, so databases in Rust. Uh, we haven't actually, I haven't actually played with those yet. So it's, uh, it'll be good to sort of do that so we can create the database uh, API, which will also be in Rust. Uh, let's see, visualizing this, I've done that kind of thing before. Uh, location game with, I think all of this would be, would be really good. Vision, if I have blockers, that might be something to look into. I 
I think I think this is going to be the big one though, is managing the Docker containers for the game, and databases and Rust. Those are those are the two big ones. So the reason for that is the game engine was going to have to tell, like send a message to Docker, and I'm thinking of doing, I'm thinking about doing this in um, coding game style. So. If you haven't seen Coding Game, it's a really awesome coding game. Uh, coding Game is a really awesome um, sort of like web app Code War style game thing, except it's all games, and they eventually teach you AI type stuff. But the way that it works is uh, you you have your code, and it just takes in standard in. So they'll say we're going to pass you these three things in. Well, that means read from standard input three times. And they're going to have essentially a shell script that uh, loops through the three different states and hands them into you. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do is uh, just tell everybody, OK, regardless how you do, here's how the API works. Write your code so that it takes in standard input. And you're going to first read, you're first going to get like an object that has all this information and then put to standard output um, your move and fire. like. We, we, we can play around with how we want to uh, how we want to do this. So another this would be another spike. Ah, I need arrow to do this. Would be um, do how to uh, make a how to get info how to get info in um, the bot how to Submit actions. And then uh, there's there's one other thing that I realize. A bot that doesn't have, um, we're, the bots, are, if they're running continuously during this, then they can store state internally. And the, the way, the way I'm thinking is it's not going to like shut down the bot and then restart it again. It's going to start the container up and then that container will have a loop and so you'll hand it in something and it'll go through and wait for another one, which will probably be sitting in a thread. So we'll have like a whole bunch of threads in the game engine. So we'll need to test that out too. So uh, Docker containers running infinite loops um, waiting for waiting for input in rust threads it's a long one waiting for input nope in rust threads That's a little bit small. How long I've been streaming? Uh, I've been streaming a little bit, a uh, one minute over an hour. Well, I, I think so. I could actually check my time and I'll have it exactly. I have been streaming for one hour, two minutes, and 10 seconds. All right, this can look down. All right. Um, we can add to these spikes, but I think what I'm going to do next is probably create something like a Trello board. Uh, I'm going to do this Kanban style. It's just me. Um, so therefore, it'll be, OK, um, here's like our, all of our doings. And then we'll have our, uh, our no, here's our backlog to do and done. And uh, maybe like one more for like a future, like a future or not do. Um, I don't know, I'll figure out like the swim lanes for, for Trello later. And then I'll create a repo and uh, we'll start playing with that. An ice box, yes, definitely an ice box. Because if there's anything that I've learned from making projects is eventually you just have so many ideas that you want to do and it's a really, really, really bad idea to actually do them all. Also, I need to make sure I can export this entire thing. So, can I save as a PNG? 
save file. Let's take a look at what we have in downloads. Here's our drawing. Oh yeah, it has everything we need. All, all of the stuff was saved here, so this is perfect. Um, I mean, it gets a little bit weird with our eraser that we did. It erased the, the white background that they started us with. Uh, let's see, but other than that, it has sort of, it's collected everything that we really want want to put in here for this initial planning session. So therefore, future videos is uh, going to be either sort of collecting all of this into uh, into bite-sized elements um, and probably working with the spikes and creating uh, uh, player stories. And um, if we can, we're going to do as much um, test-driven development on the back end as we can. Uh, I'm a little bit unfamiliar with how to do that with games, so that might be a little bit interesting, but uh, we'll do as much as we can. Uh, a boil capo, good morning. I'm sorry, but we're we're just about to end the stream too. So, uh, because I am trying a new time, um, just so that I can take the bus, get to work. Uh, it is getting dark before I leave work now, so I don't. I'm not sure how much I feel like riding my bike in the, the complete darkness and freezing weather. Um, so I am probably not going to do that. Uh, but I will be exporting this over to YouTube so everybody can go watch that. Um, also, of course, this is saved in Twitch for, what, 14 days or so, I think, is, is how long Twitch lets us non-partners non uh, store things. All right. Uh, I don't have anything else. So with that, uh, I am going to uh, go get ready for the rest of my day. I hope all of you have a great rest of your days. And I'm looking forward to uh, building this with, uh, with all of you in the, in the future. Um, take, uh, keep an eye out on, uh, on Twitter. I will, um, I will post a link when I get a new repo going. And uh, I'll put this drawing up there so anybody can sort of look at this and uh, we'll start programming a game. It'll be fun. Um, it'll be crazy too. We'll, we'll see it out. And that's it. <laughs>